Hey, Pete Scalusier here. Uh, picking up just a little bit after the last episode of my Civ 5 playthrough, post-industrial era. I was going to go all the way to turn 400 before picking up the recording again uh, and let some time go by, but I had some events happen. First of all, uh, in two turns, we have another World Congress, so I wanted to be recording for that. But also, this little symbol here, you are the first civilization to achieve a culture that is influence, uh, influential with another player. So we'll click on our little thing here. As you can see, I have 104 tourism now, so over 100 tourism. That's pretty exciting. And you can see that even with France now, I'm rising slowly. And with three of the civs, I'm rising. But with Carthage, I am influential now. I'm actually over 100%. And the nice thing is you get... You reach influential at 100%, but it keeps going. There's like an overflow from that point. Because you can see it says I'm dominant at 200%. Now, I highly doubt, honestly, that I'm going to get to 200% before the end of this. But that means I have some room to spare there. So if, if it starts to slip away from me, I don't immediately drop below 100 because I'm able to get some excess. So we can slick on... We can select the Culture of Victory tab here. You can see that Denmark, 1 out of 7. So, that's really exciting. And even France, who was my biggest contender with all of this, is still 42 less than me in their tourism. So, I've really gotten that situated. The bad thing is that most everybody has gone with order. The only other person so far that's gone with autocracy is Austria. Which is good, though. Because Austria was one of the ones that I was really slow with as far as, like, influencing them. So the fact that we're the same thing should help. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I actually did... Yeah, there we go. I just started Open Borders with them, so I got a little bit of a bonus out of that. So I'm working on influencing them. But you can see that it's, uh, it's going to be more difficult since most everybody is something different than autocracy. So that's really holding me back. And I probably would have been better off with order for that reason. But it's not the end of the world. Now one thing I never looked at before, swapping great works, is really interesting because it looks like you can kind of... I want to say you can kind of... like It's almost like trading, but it's trading great works and that's really interesting so i might be looking into that later on to see if i can get uh like for example if you have a ton of art slots but no music slots and you get a great work of music swap out with someone else to give you another music slot and fill up one of your uh, many available art slots which is kind of the situation that i'm in right now where i have tons of art slots so Earlier in the game, I basically, if I got someone like a great musician and I couldn't put their great work anywhere, I would just put them to sleep and let and wait until I could get that available. But if I have other slots available, then I could swap those play those around and make something happen. And I didn't really, uh, I could, I didn't know or notice that that was even a thing. So, for future reference and from this point on. If I was to max out on a specific type of great work where I couldn't fit anymore but I had it available, then that's exactly what I would do. So it's good to know that I could do that. That was, you know, I was happy to find that out. So really quick, I wanted to actually look at the cultural overview so I can get a sense of what I do have a bunch of. And it looks like music has caught up in a big way as far as available slots. You see I've got one, two, three four music slots available to me right now and one two available writing slots but only uh only one available art slot i used to have tons of art slots and it looks like i finally started to kind of max out on those so but i'm basically filling up on everything like all of my available slots are starting to kind of max out so that may become an issue sometime in the near future but for right now it looks like you know we're kind of holding up there now here's an interest i'm trying to think about this a little bit here normally like back in the day before brave new world if you were going for a culture victory you want to generate as much culture as possible but now tourism is what's important for winning a cultural victory culture is more of the defense to that so one of these things that they're talking about enacting, the uh, improving great person tiles to give plus two culture, 
and landmarks to get plus four culture. Normally, you would think to yourself, great, awesome. Like, I'm trying to get a culture victory, so that's perfect. But I actually think that that might be a bad thing. If I understand how this system works now, I don't want the other civs to have more culture because that's going to give them more defense against my tourism. And I think that's a bad thing for me. So I have two delegates remaining because I put six into the yay vote for the World's Fair because I do want that to be a thing. I think I'm going to put in two nay votes for the historical landmarks to see if I can squash that a little bit because I don't think that's a good thing. Okay, so we'll start by, let's look at, we'll see what happened here. Okay, so the World's Fair was passed and is now active. Uh, looks like just about everybody had at least a couple yay votes for that, so that's good. And that means that a certain, I, I could put production from cities towards that instead of, hold on, avoid growth, bang. Instead of the production going towards buildings and stuff like that, it can go towards the World's Fair instead. And since this city here is kind of OP, as far as how much stuff it has, the only things I have left to build are Arsenal, Zoo, Hospital, or Units. So I could instead start contributing to the World's Fair, and all my production will just be going towards that endlessly. The same as it would if you selected Gold or Science, where it just puts production towards those two things. Now it's putting the production towards the World's Fair. And it actually gives us, if I look at it, you can see uh, this project is 0% complete. So far, your civilization has contributed zero production. Higher contribu uh, contributions will earn more rewards, and you can see the rewards there. So uh, if we do 175 or more, we get 500 points towards the next uh, Golden Age, which is awesome. 350 or more will give us a free social policy. And uh, let's see... And then for the highest contributor, you get a 100% culture increase for 20 turns. And if nothing else, we want to make sure that nobody else gets that because that would be a good defense for them. But it would also give us a ton of policies and whatnot. So I'm definitely for now going to be putting that city towards that and pretty soon the capital as well. Ooh, look at this one, International Games. Begins the International Games projects. Once underway, civilizations can contribute production towards its completion by selecting uh, in the city production list, when complete, civilizations receive bonuses based on how much they have contributed. And you can see uh, the top prize there is a increase by 100% of tourism for 20 turns and a free social policy. That is absolutely freaking amazing. And I definitely, definitely, definitely want that. That would be fan-freaking-tastic. You can also see that I'm only one behind Austria for the number of delegates I have. So I need to keep working on the city-states and whatnot and trying to get one or two of those on my side. Because if I can get the most delegates out of everybody, then obviously we'll be a lot better off. But that would be really good. And that's in 20 turns. It, used to be it was 25 turns between each vote. Now it's only 20 turns because uh, more people get into later eras. And that works out really good for uh, for us because then we get quicker votes and whatnot. But yeah, that international games, that is what's up. Whoa. And suddenly everyone's at war with uh, Brazil. Better them than me. I have yet to go to war with anybody, knock on wood. And it's 1979, so pretty close to the end of the game here. And we've avoided that whole situation thus far and thank goodness because i still you know my units aren't that great and i still don't have that many of them speaking of which i can still upgrade the musket man so i should probably get around to that but yeah thankfully i haven't had to uh worry about that i will say though i think austria is actually going for a diplomatic victory because they have a lot of delegates in their pocket so if they try to go for a world leader vote that is how they would get the diplomatic victory and they might be able to get it at this point so i think one important thing for me to work on ah plenty of sticks wow actually brazil is lower on the list than me i'm surprised and that sucks because two people just went to war with him i don't have but five military units so if he's lower on the list than me then he must be really bad off 
It's interesting that Napoleon's army is gigantic compared to mine. Probably like what, like five times the size of my military, and he looks like he's trying to go for a culture victory, considering how much of a contender he's been in the cultural victory this whole time. So I find that interesting. Now I was just about to mention the World's Fair thing, and then we got an update here. The World's Fair project is forty-nine percent complete. The contributor uh, to contribute towards its completion and earn a reward, choose the project in the city production list. So. I wanted to point out that we already have contributed 290 for production towards the creationist. So we already have the bronze, which is good for 500 points towards the next golden age. It's only been a few turns, and that seems to be like a lot of production. But I can't really put anything else towards it right now. Everybody's been working on these buildings for a while. I didn't want to switch them over. And uh, this city in particular has uh, insanely high production right now, 64.8. So... I figured they're the best ones for the job. But if it's it's only at 49% now, so I should be able to put Copenhagen. I'll when basically both Copenhagen uh over here at how would you say that? Ribe, Reeb, I guess Ribe probably. All of them as soon as they finish building what they're building until the World's Fair is done, all of them will have production towards it so I can try to ensure that I'm the number one dude for that. But now we also get to select a level 2 tenant. Okay, so Zanzibar still wants me to complete a trade route to them. And I'm, a, I'm right about to lose. I'm right at 60 for them. So they are the immediate concern. They have finished with whatever it was that they were building. <laughs> I don't even remember. So they're going to go now towards the World's Fair. Again, they're not... They don't have a ton of production, but it's better than nothing. And they are going to buy me a cargo ship. The last one that I can have. Now, I'm going to lose them as an ally because it won't work till next turn when I can send them up there. But I'll lose them as an ally, and then I should immediately get them back as an ally. So it's not the end of the world because the vote's not coming up anytime soon. And it looks like we're doing all right, though. It looks like uh, we've contributed 423 productions so far towards the project, and it's 75% complete now. So it's getting completed very, very quickly, but that's a lot of production that we're putting towards it. So I feel pretty good about my chances of being the victor on that. We know for sure that I'm going to be able to get the silver prize because I'm, I'm already way over the uh, what I could put towards that. So we know for sure I'm at least going to get a free social policy out of the deal, which is nice. I wonder if you get both prizes for going over. The free social policy and the 500 points towards your next Golden Age, which would also be nice. Golden Ages are always good. Yes. Okay, so I actually... A cargo ship over here just finished, and I decided to send them to Zanzibar instead because this one's on this side, and I thought there's a chance that they can reach... If, they, if there's a chance that they can reach Austria as a trade route, then I would get gained influence with them, and that would be absolutely brilliant. Or just someone that I don't already have a trade route with. Uh, and yes, I can reach Austria, so that is awesome. Now, unfortunately, that means, uh, the, that means having Christian pressures sent this way. But... Um, that's okay. I'm going to be sending more Jewish pressure than they're going to be sending of Christian pressure, so it's not the end of the world. And uh, I and I also get two science out of it, which is nice. So, but the main thing is the bonus that I'm now going to have as uh, for my tourism bonus against them. So you can see Austria is now up to 50% because of the open borders and the trade route. So that's really important because they were really lacking in as far as like how. I was, you know, influencing them to become influential with them. So that's really good. And now every city I have except for this one is putting production towards the World Trade or the World's Fair rather. Up to 520. So feeling pretty good about that. That should be done uh possibly next turn and then we'll see who the victor is on that. It's exciting. My first world fair. Oh. <sighs> ah, son of a gun. Wow, Napoleon really poured everything he had into that, didn't he? 
doubled my production towards the World's Fair. But as it turns out, you do get both the bronze and the silver rewards for completing it. So a uh, ton of points to go towards the uh, Golden Age, which is nice, and a free social policy. But he gets all that stuff and 100% increase to his culture for 20 turns. So I'm going to have no influence on him at all with my tourism over the next 20 turns. He has a solid wall of culture now against me. Uh, but you can see how I did do a lot better than everybody else with the production. The next closest one to me was almost 200 less and then on down the road. So I didn't do too bad on that. But obviously, I, I could have put all four of my cities on production that whole time. And I don't think I would have generated that much. So that's how that's going to go. <laughs> the big deal is that I get to do my next level three tenant. And it was the one that I really wanted. 50% tourism to civilizations fighting a common enemy. So... Not that this can always affect me. It doesn't. It's only when uh, it's only to civilizations that are fighting a common enemy. So, at some point in the game, I could actually use war to help boost tourism towards specific places that I need to do so. I may not actually even get around to doing that, but I have the option. So there it is. And that should be the last tenant from my ideology that I needed or wanted to get. So from this point on. When I'm grabbing social policies, not the button I wanted to hit, I don't necessarily have to go into my ideology. I could do any of the other ones. So, for example, uh, patronage might be good to help me with the city-states so I could have more votes and stuff like that. Uh, co commerce could be good to help me with money situations and whatnot. So I'm probably going to, from this point on, stop putting points into ideology and start working on other things. But, yeah, that... That that went well, though. I feel good about that. Oh, I can do the East India Trading Company now. Oh, that's right. I finally finished all the markets everywhere. Well, that's going to really help with gold, so that's good. And these guys are going to build this. I just unlocked this a few turns ago with flight. And requires autocracy, so that's one of the things I can totally do. Gives me plus two happiness. This is a new building that I've never gotten to build before, but it gives me plus two happiness. And plus one happiness for every two policies that I've adopted. And gives us a free social policy. So, gives you a ton of things. That's a really cool building. And for the record, it looks like I gained 40 influence points by sending that cargo ship there. So, definitely did a lot more good to me than just giving them straight up money. So, now my next concern is Quebec City. I'm going to lose them in just a couple turns. And the only thing that they want is... They want me to discover a natural wonder. Not too many places left on the globe that I could even try to do that. I'm not even sure where my ship is, to be honest with you. Where are you, ship? He's out there discovering something. And I don't know where he is. Ship. How do you find a ship? I have a ship. It's out there somewhere. It's set to, you know, exploration. So he's just automatically going around uncovering things. How low are these ones, by the way? 94, 82, so they're a little bit better off. And I have no idea. It looks like he came up this way. Or he went away that way. It's hard to know. I have no idea where my ship is. I'm going to have to pay attention to the minimap when I click next and see if any, like, fog of war goes away, and then I'll know where my ship is. I've lost a ship. How do you do that? How, how is that a thing? Well, I lucked out because Wittenberg still wants a trade route set up going to them. And it just so happens that I have a do that is now available to do a trade. Although the money is not as good as going to like a sieve or something like that. But that's going to give me some good influence with them. They were starting to slip a little bit, but I still had, uh, you know, I had plenty to go. But that's going to make it even more solid. So they're going to be on my side for quite a while. You know what else? I completely forgot about it, but I have enough faith to buy another dude. So let's see where we have more slots. I would say probably music is where I have the majority of my slots right now. So let's do that. Let's buy a great musician. Pachow. Good stuff. Jeez, I had another science technology stolen radio from freaking Carthaginian spies.
And I have a counter spy there and a police station and the whole nine yards. Well, bish all. Ah, uh, what are you going to do? So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. I've been progressing the turns, waiting for something like monumentally eventful to happen to kind of use as like a closure. But we're getting close to the next vote, and I wanted to save that for the next episode. So now's as good a time as any, I suppose, to wrap things up. So thanks again for watching today's episode of my Civilization V playthrough post-industrial era. I will keep you posted as always and continue to make uh, episodes so that you can see how things conclude. Because we're getting closer and closer to the end now. Just over 50 turns left in the game. Hey, I got a great writer. How about that? That's, you know, something. Sort of. It's not nothing for the end of the episode. Too true. Okay, so... <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate the view and support as always, and I will see you next time. Later.